we go. Here we go. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It is my favourite time of the week. What it's, time is that, Lee? It's, to be fair, I've noticed that I've, as I've been listening to other podcasts, there are other podcasts out there, um, I've realised that we never actually say what day we're recording. And it's kind of, most people like to say what day it is because it gives them grounding of, of knowing something about them. I don't know what. Yeah. But anyway, it's Thursday. It is Thursday. It's Thursday. <laughs> it's 4.30 uh, at BDA Buckingham Central. And um, yes, it's episode 39. Joining me this week... Um, you may notice we've lost Camilla. Camilla's not here today. Um, but we've got the ever resourceful, and we know his name, it's Rob. And Hello there. Joining us as ever is the captain of the ship, David Knowles. Hello. So this week on episode 39, welcome. Is everybody okay? Everyone I'm good. Good, week? good, thank you. Yes, yeah. Yeah. great week, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Yeah. Have you seen any NFL yet? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no, no I haven't either. No, is that oh, no one's... Oh, anyway. National Farmers League? Yeah. It is. The tractors okay. were good this week. The tractors okay. have been good. Yeah. Um, bailing that hay. So, this week we're going to talk about, um, well, hotel hospitality and how to get bookings into your hotels, um, what marketing methods are out there to be used and what trends are currently being used by uh, the hotel marketing people uh, to get you into them. Um, so, we've been doing lots of research. David's done, well, he's been researching all day. Uh, Rob's done a bit. You've got a, f- a fair few I've sheets. Got of paper. a few bits. So normally we'd go to David, but because he's got so much, we're not going to go to David this time because we haven't got this half. Like I said, it's half four. The sun's coming down, and you know he, he could be here till. Look, you should, well, look, he's got well, a whole book. He's got an abundance. Here. Abundance. So we're going to start with Rob. Rob's going to lead us in gently. You know, I hadn't planned to, but I'm ready for it now. That's okay. Well, that's okay. None of us are planned. Go really. on, then, Robert. Okay. Um, well, do you know what? Obviously, we've got a bit of experience in hospitality, um, of course, coupled with our research. And the biggest thing that was apparent is is kind of the shift again. Well, you know, before we get into some of the examples, shift? Th- the shift in, in the way people book hotels uh, or their stays. Um, and we're looking at that kind of newer generation, the 20 to 30 year olds. Right. Um, you know, they, they've shifted from from traditional means. Um, what are the traditional means? Though? Well, traditional means is just going to the, the hotel website, looking on there, looking at the features. You're, you're brilliant today. Um, looking at the features and, and booking it through there. Now it's a lot more about actually looking for peers, uh, user-generated content of people who say that. So we're talking to the trip advisors right, of this yeah. world, the Google so now, reviews. Uh, no, are you telling me I'm wrong? I've read that it's different. Okay. I've read that the people that used to be going to the likes of Expedia are now going back to the main hotel website the book through there now yeah, there's a reason behind that as well yeah there is I've is got that s- right yeah, yeah. Awesome. so no it's an interesting point but I think before you make that decision of actually where you book mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and whether you're using their site or a booking.com or any of those other services out there you are looking at reviews aren't you you're looking at mm-hmm. not the actual photos that the hotel is showing you're looking at some of the user photos that they've taken you're checking out probably Instagram social media mm-hmm. and you're seeing what people are saying then you're rightly the, the trend is actually the use of do a search and people like booking.com last minute they dominated those rankings you know they were one two three four on on google um but a lot of people now are going back to the actual hotel themselves after they've done their research they're going back to their main website and booking through there because you actually get the best rates and you can negotiate also over the phone extras like oh you know is there any spare balcony rooms or whatever it may be so mm-hmm. again that's where the trends you're right yeah. is, is completely yeah. shifted back to that um well i mentioned there's a little bit of middle ground though because i might i'll speak from experience um because you know come on lee hit me with your experience I'll, so basically i'll in, in, insight into my world um i'll be trying to book a hotel for my sister's wedding next year in italy and uh, the hotel that i'm actually trying to book through the information they have given the uh, the scope of this hotel, the cost of it, mm. given the actual information they have, it's pretty poor. Okay. They don't have they like they give you a selection of rooms, but they don't actually tell you how big the room is. They don't give you enough photographs to actually suggest. Yeah. If I've taken my family here, can we actually all stay? As much as it's listed as a family room, you can't look at it and go, can I actually be good? So then I've had to go over to TripAdvisor. Yep. To get reviews from real people to say, well, in actual fact, you probably can't stay here with a family. You need this room. You need that room. Yeah. Uh, and what the features are like. And then if I want to book it, I click on the book button on the hotel website and it then links me through to booking.com. Yeah. And I'm like, hang on. It's, I, I don't yeah, get it. those journeys are messed up. It's just, it's just it put, well, you've got me in mm. one place. Here yeah. I am. Talk to me. Massage me. And I find that some of these hotels, if they're of the rather expensive type, mm. they tend to be a bit snooty in their sort of, it's kind of like, hey, here's some information, darling. And that's, that's all you kind of get. Darling. <laughs> <It's kinda laughs> they just expect you to just book. There's none of that cuddling you to sort of, you know, 
nurture you through the I process. Think, I think you're, you, I think that's a brilliant point. Mm. The, the thing that appeals to me, and I'm putting my consumer head on here, is I like to see the personality. Yeah. And it's about, you know, you know, show me your personality. That's why some of these independent chains, there's some great ones out there. You know, well, it's independent chains, but like the, the Lucky Onion, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. A couple, I've heard in, the name. Yeah, one in Cheltenham, one just outside in the Cotswolds, and a couple of others scattered around in that direction. But it oozes personality. Yeah. Everything from the Instagram, mm. it's nicely mm. shot. The rooms, lots of photographs, so yeah. you know what you're getting. Yeah. But right. friendly photography, not this friendly, sort of... Not, not corporate, cold, yeah. Yeah. post-apocalyptic, yeah. like there's no that one, one in the hotel. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of that. Um, and I think it's about that personality, and you're completely right. Massage me, you know, let me start a spot. I can't wait to be there that weekend I'm looking for. You know, you just yeah. show me that. Mm. I've noticed a few other trends as well, in that when you're actually on the site, I've, I've noticed this through a few websites, not necessarily hotels, but I noticed this, we, we use this uh, application called Boards, and um, basically it's a storyboarding tool. But when uh, you're, when that's you, what I've got, Boards, what's Boards? When you're on their website, you get these little, I've noticed, yeah. it, I noticed it first with hotels, yep. and then I've noticed it in more previously, um, recently with Boards, is that when you're doing anything where you're thinking of booking, or, or it's booking or taking any sort yeah. of subscription plan, you get these little notifications at the bottom that says, so and so and so has recently just booked. Or oh, so yeah, so so it's just really create urgency. It's, it's kind of like, urgency. and you're kind of like, ooh, no, oh no, it's not. There are 27 people looking at this booking. Yeah, There's no, only two places I've, left. Yeah. I've noticed they do that with the rooms. Last room available. We think, yeah. what in the what? Is it? Okay, and then, but I've noticed this other thing is that you then get now it's like it's not an urgency thing. Um, but it's more like a reassurance of someone else has just purchased this room or yeah, someone else has just yeah. done this or someone else is it's basically someone else is agreeing with you this is a nice hotel you mm. should probably just book it mm. and it's all that so, so yeah I've noticed they've been doing quite a lot of that recently. yeah yeah I think we, we see that and do you know what, even though I know the tricks behind it it sometimes gets me because I'm like I really want this place this is a good deal but there's, you know, I've got to do it yeah, quickly because yeah. there's only one room there's left. Only one room left, and you're, and you're people are looking at this. So yeah, it does create that urgency, even if you kind of know that sometimes it's a bit of a ploy. It's like old e-commerce ploy, isn't it? Only two left in stock. Just to, yeah, just to go back to last week's po or previous podcast, I actually had to talk to boards about a, uh, a a subscription plan that we have, and I had to talk to a bot. How did you feel? But come on, Lee. I know, I know this is I know, going back sorry, to last week. How did you feel? Well, her name was Karen. She was in Bulgaria, um, and she was away. Bots. What? Well, she was just away. She wasn't there. So even though the bot was, so I asked the, I asked the bot a question. Okay, so I need to change my subscription plan. I'm not entirely sure how to do it. Hey, can you help? Blah blah blah. And um, she was away. She didn't reply. She did reply. Uh, she sent me an email at about I don't know three o'clock this morning, uh, roughly around that time. Not that I checked, Karen. Um, so yes, but she did kind of sort my issue out. Lee. Um, but it was just a bit like. <sighs> Are and you there was sure a there Karen, was, the Bulgarian a bot, <laughs> is a bot? <laughs> well, I don't know. She oh, started to sound more like a human. <laughs> She was away. Hey, she was is having that lunch. Good? You don't know. I don't know what she was doing. I wish she'd rather, Worst say, ever. rather yeah. just away. She went on holiday as well. Yeah. She went to Bulgaria. Oh, uh, I mean, lazy bot. But anyway, lazy bot. sorry, I've you no, no. anyway, bot. So, so as I was looking at this anyway, it, what mm. really surprised me is is Marriott Hotels. Oh, yeah. um, I had, well, behind their marketing arm, and they're doing some fantastic marketing, is a creativity lab. So they, they have a lab where they're just literally looking at, I can never say this word, so you might correct me, experiential. Got it. Experiential marketing. Does that sound like um, Harry Potter? No, it's Experianus. Like that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not uh, Experianus. No, so uh, experiential marketing, um, social media, new platforms, um, and they all also have a mini Hollywood-sized studio nice. to produce videos. Um, and when you think of Marriott Hotel, you think this big, cumbersome beast um, of a hotel mm. chain around the world. Yeah. God knows how many yeah. hotels they have. But actually, they're really quick moving in what they're doing. So a couple of examples where they were one of the first to, to use Snapchat. And they invited, who is it, Casey? Neistat. 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 And uh, is, it, is it Steve McBride? Is it a couple of influencers anyway, big uh, social media influencers, to take over the Snapchat for three days. You know, and this what, was while staying at the hotel? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah just complete takeover, do what you want. They had literally no rules. Just go and enjoy the hotel. And, you know, use our Snapchat channel to absolutely promote everything that you're doing. <laughs> And do you know what? They were one of the first to do that, and that was a brave step. But the thing that really Someone caught... Like Marriott, yeah. I mean, you and think you, Marriott quite stuffy, wouldn't you? And you would like this thing. I'm going to have to remember the name of it. So the big thing that kind of caught my eye to Marriott is they've actually got this creativity lab behind they everything. they abandoned chatbots? No. no, no sorry. You chatbot hater. Karen, they're clearly Karen. a human, not chatbot. I'm um, sorry, Karen. But they created this mini-sized movie. So it's like movie sort of value pr you know, oh, production level. It's called Two like oh, Bellman. Oh, I've seen this. You've seen Two Bellman. Yeah, you've shown me this before. Yeah, so this is what, you know, th this, this was, was kind fancy. Of, 
it's fa- it feels like a Hollywood movie. Yeah, this was um, fancy. And the whole idea was it was Big. to create like a movie. It's something about mm. like an art dealer or art yeah. theft going on in the hotel, and it's mm. the, the behind the scenes mm. of these two bellmen who kind of. We'll put the link every... in the description. It's, yeah, it's, you, it's you've worth got to see it. It's worth watching this one. So it's eighteen minutes long. <laughs> and do, do you know where they play? Yes, it, it was. It's got thousands, if not millions, of views on, on social media. But actually, when you get into your room. Mm-hmm. You can watch it on your TV screen. You know they have like things yeah. playing when you get into these hotels. Anyway, they put it there, and do you know what? Um, the feedback they got was amazing because it was actually you're watching a movie that's taken place yeah. in your hotel, and it was just a very different, very brave way of kind of marketing. Well, their hotels on social media, but also well, you're when bringing you're them. Yeah, you're bringing them to the site. You're lots of personality. Them, you know, mm. personality, the, the content, book a book a room. You've got offers there. Mm. Sign up, get email notifications. If you can still even do that, these, these just days. Rob, didn't you have some some kind of do's and don'ts? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean well, you should probably pass. Them, I think Dave's got some do's and don'ts as well. Yeah. I think Robert should go first. Well, do you I know what? I'm w- up in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's been very naughty today. Um, one of the things I saw, and I think it was some from Marriott, and this is for me this statement that they made yeah. uh, is com- completely true in marketing any industry. Mm-hmm. And they said we need to stop interrupting people. Um, from what they're interested in and become what they are interested in. And I, and I love that because it's just well, That's not kind of what I said at the beginning. Was it, this was your quote, wasn't it? Well, it was. If you're a hotel, if you're a hotel website, be a hotel website. Yeah. You know, cuddle it, me yeah. through the door. Make me... Mm, yeah. I can almost smell the room. Yeah. Mm, I can almost feel the pillows. Mm. You know, that sort of thing. Not like, oh, uh, here's a... Uh, you know, disconnecting photos. Exactly. Uh, I don't actually want to go there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that plays into playing to your niche. You know, know your niche. Don't try and be everything to all people. You know, know your weekday audience is different from your weekend audience. That's a big thing. Yeah. And then play to your niche. And, you know, uh, there's, there's some really good hotels out there and some probably some bad ones as well that, that play to their niche. Yeah, and this is probably one of those. Um, Hans Brinker. Hans Brinker! So it's a budget hotel chain of two. Doesn't have a budget there's one, in, there's one in Amsterdam, yep. one in Lisbon. And they are not apologetic about actually not being a very good hotel. In fact, they use it as part of their marketing. Basically, what they are saying is, is that... <laughs> You know, they, they apologise. Sorry for being amazing at disturbing you. Sorry for being the best in ignoring your complaints. Sorry for being excellent in losing your luggage. Wow. You know, they, they make a, a point of saying, we're not great. This is what you're going to get. But actually, it's working really well for them. I think, I think their wow. hotels, hostels yeah. are, re- are, are booked up. You know, they, they, wow. there's a huge so- amount of demand for them. They don't claim to have good views. If you're lucky to get a view at all, it's a brick you know, wall. <laughs> it's, yeah, <laughs> if, you have a, if you have even have a window. But what they've done yeah. is they've just played to their audience. Yeah, <laughs> which I'm guessing then is which travelers, backpackers, yeah, exactly looking for somewhere cheap, cheap to crash, crash for a few nights yeah. so they can go wander around Amsterdam, wander around Lisbon yeah. when they're out backpacking. Okay, so what they called again? The Hans, Hans Brinker. Do they have a website or anything? Well, of course they have a website. They, I mean. have a, they have a website. No, they're going to apologise. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're so <laughs> shit. We haven't even got a website. So yeah, their website HansBrinker.com, I yeah. assume. Um, oh, it's very colourful. Yeah, it's very colourful. Is that actually you know, the They even website? say like, things like two locations, low expectations on it. I like that. You know, they are not... <laughs> yeah, what you see is what you get, but don't, just don't look too closely. They're really playing on this not being top end, but yeah. being really bottom quite, end. And I think it's great. It is great, isn't it? Because yeah. obviously people talk about it. I, I presume it's maybe even come quite a thing for these backpackers to stay there. Go, I've stayed at that hotel. I would, I would say so. Yeah, I can imagine I, You know, that. it makes me want to do it. I'd like to just... He's lying. Them. No, That's I'm lie. not lying. I can't see David at Hans no, Brinker. Dave, Dave I can. never stay at Hans Brinker. <laughs> I don't think about it. I know, you go camping and stuff, don't you? Oh, I love it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, maybe maybe you would. would. There you go. Do you yeah. fair, there's something... This is, again, off topic. Sorry. But there's something quite retro about retro websites. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, this like, uh, this is like, really retro. So it's like, let's get rid of the... I don't know. Change your website. Anyway, sorry. Off topic. It's just something that popped in my head. Could be another Do you know topic. what is the top, according to the brand index... Yeah, yeah actually, what is the top uh, top rated hotel? Yes. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> no, nor do I. This. <laughs> oh yeah, we sorry. We tried to. Yeah, it's, uh, sorry. I, I got to read my notes. Brand finance, based based on an anal- uh, analysis, have rated um, basically the hotels over the last. I think this is probably last year's stats. So apologies, it may have changed a little bit. But um, so, 
Number one in the UK. Oh, in the UK. In the UK. Like, I, I know. Is, 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 are they chain hotels or some of them independents? No, I think, I think it's, it's boutique. Much chain. It's probably chain. You've probably seen it's it. A bit, bit of a mixture. I haven't seen it. No. Uh, well, I don't Do know. I don't I, know where I to have start. No idea. Let's put everyone out there, misery. Not a clue. Premier Inn. Apparently, is the top hotel chain in the UK. Premier Inn. Travel Lodge comes nowhere. Oh, no, I can understand why. No, it's okay. Big, 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 big. Oh, this is um, chains as opposed yeah, to independents. Number two is Holiday Inn. Number t- yeah. uh, three was Days In. Uh, number four was the Hilton Group. Uh, so I thought Hilton might group in. Yeah. And Hilton, do you know that the Hilton were doing a part of a reward scheme that basically every time you stay, if you booked through the Hilton app, when you turned up, you got a nice, free, warm, what? Cuddle? No. Uh, close with C, but no. Um, souffle. Oh, Coffee. See, oh, close, but no cigar. Oh, a cortado. No, it was a cookie. Oh. You get a nice warm cookie when you book through the Hilton app. Another way of bringing people in yeah. through your app. Don't go through like a yeah. booking.com. Go through the app. And um, one of the other ones that I've seen that I really love, and Holly put pointed this out, and I've seen these adverts before. You mm. may have seen them. If you've seen Game of Thrones, you'll know there's a very tall chap with a ginger beard. His name is... Oh, he's a wildling, isn't he? The wildling. Christopher. He's a wildling. Now, he has Christopher. I'm terribly sorry. You're probably not even watching this anyway. But, Christopher, I'm <laughs> going to murder your surname now. Um, Come on, I, w- I want to hear this one. Hayugo. Hayugo. Anyway, I don't know. Like Street Fighter. Hayugo. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, God, it gets worse. Anyway, Christopher, um, I'm loving your work on the apps. You should go and have a look at the, the Wyndham apps. The Wyndham, sorry, adverts. Wyndham. Wyndham. Okay. It's a sort of like a reward scheme. Um, they are highly amusing. Um, very sort of Willy Wonka-ish mm. and um, they're very worth to watch and it's a, it's a great way of sort of comedy being used in advertising in terms of yeah they're quite quirky uh, and they're still they, mm. they still they still get to the point but have a look at them I'll put the link in the, dis- in the, in the yeah, show yeah no it's not, I've never seen them have a look but they're good I know good. the guy you're on about yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a tall guy because they're, they're always they're always going on about well it's, it's a way of getting reward schemes and, and basically advertising really marketing what rewards you can get mm. by using the window map um, as they do as Hilton um, and they've got basically it's a whole chain there's days I didn't know the whole days days in um, Hilton group I think no not Hilton they're all under this one Wyndham group anyway okay but anyway Premier Inn they're top of 2017 so that may have changed it might not have done but That's well done Premier Inn um, good use of advertising by them as well with Lenny Henry yep, um, yep. he's still going uh, on them yeah. isn't he is he still in them I don't know if he's still in them, but um, I think so. I think I saw him I recently. Think in, I think he's still in them. Yeah, still I still don't think they're as good as the sorry the Curry's ad those. Do you remember the Curry's ad from Christmas? With um, no. Oh, what's his name? From, from Christmas as long ago or Christmas is no, no. It's only because it's the same sort of style of advert. Yeah. Which, Lady Henry in it, but oh, the guy Jeff Goblin, Jeff Goblin and Curry's. Oh, I remember. Those oh, two, you that, love that. That is just genius. I just don't get that. That should not work. Curry's are awful. Can you say curries are awful? Yeah, I just did. <laughs> Naughty again. Naughty again. So um, anyway, yeah. So that's my that's my. Anyway, David, you've not you've been quite quiet. Well, I haven't. No, he did quite a good. Se- yeah, I thought he did a quite a good segment <laughs> on uh, what was it? <laughs> Hans Brinker. Hans Brinker. Hans Brinker. Hans Brinker. I like it. Hans I like Brinker. it. But but yeah, just you know, I, from from what we know and what we've done here in the past, there's a few hot tips to get bums on seats. Do you want to know my hot tips? I want to know what your hot tips. They're not are, just yeah. mine. I've plagiarised some of them. I have some hot tips. Um, I have some hot tips. I think we touched on it earlier. Know your audience. You know, know your weekday audience is going to often differ from your weekend audience, and and know within those two audiences, segment them, and then play to your niche. You know, don't mess around trying to be everything to everyone. If you've got a niche, play to it. Um, and we touched on this earlier. Think personality. You know, think about actually, it's about getting our personality across. You know, and personality isn't just um, your tone of voice. You know, it's things like your deck, all your furnishings have to reflect that. Um, the food, the staff, the, the, the ambience. Because you're paying for an experience. As, as the isn't consumer, exactly you're paying that? for the ex- experience. You're going away. If it's business, it might just be somewhere to lay your head for the night yep. to go on to a meeting the next day or whatever it is. Yeah. But if you're going away for the weekend, it's all part of that yeah. experience. It's all part of that, that whole. 24, 48 hours yeah. that you're away from your home Completely. doing something different with yep. your loved ones or whoever it might be. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, make it right. Completely. Live it and breathe That's it. That's what the, uh, the Ritz did. They're, sorry, that was my stomach. Uh, they're promoting, um, they tried to, pr- hard, very hard to promote direct bookings through the Ritz. Re- oh, my word. Johnson Ross. Um, through the Ritz website. Um, <laughs> wibbly wobbly wibbly. Uh, as was Rosewood Hotel, apparently, as well, to make it clear why users should 
you know, basically promoting your benefits. And that you'd think you know what you're going to get if you go to the Ritz. So mm. that's again, that's what I was saying at the top of the shop is that some of these hotels, they don't, they like to hide behind the mysteriousness of it all. Yeah. But you've got to put it up front and, you know, you, and then you can invite people in, upsell it. Uh, make them aware of the afternoon teas or the spa yeah, treatments completely. or the food that you could get or if you yeah. book through the hotel you can then get a discount on food or you mm. can, might get one free spa treatment you might get a free cooking you might get two pillows you might get an extra duvet I don't know Yeah. but you know, it's all those sort of no, things of making it personal to the person that's staying um, and obviously then if you can incentivize that with a loyalty scheme yeah I think loyalty is so important um, I think particularly if someone's booked at your hotel, you know, you encourage them to come, come back, back and, yeah. you know, offer them something, you know, book again and you'll get, you know, well, a free Prosecco nice when you yeah. turn up or you get a 5% discount. And people want that because then you feel nice like... I've been know that you stayed. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen you. Oh, uh, yeah, the last time you stayed was in January. Oh, how was that stay? Yeah. It was great, thank you. Yeah. That's why I'm back. Oh, it's lovely to see you back again. Yeah. Here's a free... And particularly the boutique hotels, hotels, you need that mm. in the boutique hotels. You won't get that in the chains. You never will. And that's why people sometimes steer to the boutique, particularly if you're a returning customer. Oh, I don't know. I, don't, I think the Chinese could learn a lot from that. In terms of oh, no, that's what I mean. Yeah. They could. They could. Yeah. But, they, they, you know, they don't have those touches. Yeah, I think you, I've got personalisation is key. I think you've covered that. Yeah, I think you um, touched on it. Drive lottery schemes, upsell, yeah. Upsell, you know, yeah. So it's kind of, if you've, oh, yeah. you know, if you're booking for one night, I think the, the thing that you can often do is try and encourage them to book for two because you get a discount get on the disc- second yeah, night. Yeah, get a discount on the second night. Encourage upsell those slightly longer stays because, you know, if I say, oh, I can stay a second night and it's, you know, 25% off the second night, you might be tempted. Or do a cheeky one where you stay one night, but on the second day that you're there, you know, because you have to unpack and you get a free evening meal before you go. You're thinking, well, if I have a free evening meal on the second day, I might as well stay over. See? Yeah, see, that's a, that's a cheeky tactic. That's a cheeky tactic. That cheeky. One, right? Just mm. thought that one. Just popped in there. Yeah, and do you know what? Well, the only thing we haven't really touched is like video as well to actually pr- to promote your hotel. Well, the um, Wyndham, Wyndham TV, yeah, but in terms of... Yeah, uh, yeah of course. Uh, you've, you've mentioned the... Yeah, the but actually, the, you know, people want to... If you, The closest you can get to kind of experience the hotel without being there, for me, is, is a video. Storytelling. Storytelling, you know, mm. show that hotel with people in it. Um, and what the ambience is like. Um, and then obviously when you've got personal spaces, spaces like rooms, you know, it can be empty. Because you, sometimes it's nice to see an empty room because you want to picture yourself in there. But the bar, the restaurant, you want to know what you're booking them and what the ambience is like. And videos kind yeah. of give you a I bit of that, whereas is a, is a static great stone. Mm. Mm. It's been actually been a good day for storytelling for me. I've, ke- I've noticed, I've seen two key videos today. One is about... Uh, well, one one is not really. It's about the Apple Watch, Apple Watch Four, but it's got nothing really is to do with the Apple Watch. I'll put it in the link. Um, it's about stories. It's about people that own an Apple Watch and how this will sound not very great. How the Apple Watch saved their life. And you think, mm. but it's in actual fact when you watch it, it's actually quite nice and it's shot really nice and it's it's, it's a bit different from Apple. Um, and f- and their their website is actually quite nice as well. So I put that one in the link in the description. The yeah, other I one see that. Uh, was uh, basically made by um, uh, a son. Uh, his father recently passed away, and he found a collection of videos. Um, and he made a video about these videos um, and the story of his dad's passing. Um, and it won some. It won uh, the documentary award on Vimeo uh, for the staff picks. It won a film award as well. Well, I can't remember off the top of my head which one it was. It, but it's a lovely video. It's about eighteen minutes long. Okay. It is a bit of a burner but it's just from a storytelling point of view and from a filming point of view and just from the narrative it's lovely so i'll put it in the notes and I want to see it that called? what's it called it's, it's called my um, dead dad's porno I, I saw the link you were looking at <laughs> 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 my dead dad's porno which i well I, that I, title draws you in well that's why i said like, the title drew you and i didn't I, it's it just intriguing it's like what could this be what about could this be about and it was it was a brilliant way of drawing me in it's like there's the title what's this about you know, I'm thinking, this can't be about problem. And the thing that made me actually drawn to it the most was the fact that, you remember VHS tapes? Yeah. It had, yes. It had loads of... Are you too young for that? No. We had loads of VHS tapes. All, uh, I and wish. And it was all stop motion. And it was just... And it, it got like, oh, yeah, that's those VHS tapes. And they did so many fun things. It, to be fair, when we come... Sorry. When we come up with, like, ideas for storytelling or videos or anything like that... Um, sometimes pr- try to visually uh, represent ideas in terms of film or any sort of storytelling it can be quite expensive but this these this to the, the brother and the director I can't remember like uh, Charlie Tyler something like that um sorry it's awful in it but anyway um I'll put the description in the show notes so you can find out but the, just the way they they told this story with very minimal uh, imagery just mm. all by stop motion was brilliant so please if you get a chance go and have a look at it because it's really good 
Yeah, oh, well, I haven't oh, seen it. I, I heard you. I saw you looking at it, and yes, that's why I'm intrigued. So yeah. sorry to give no. us once again. Yeah. That's what I like to do. Um, anything else on the marketing of the hotels? Um, no, we haven't touched on things like Airbnb and stuff of like that. Of course, disruptors in there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, there's a yes, yeah, so there's Airbnb, mm. but there's there's a, a competitor of theirs over in the states called Home and Away, which yeah. is a show on Australian TV. No. no. <laughs> No, no, no. Let me be the one. Um, which uh, <laughs> plays, they guarantee you get the whole home and there's no... Um, oh, does that happen with it? I thought with Airbnb, Airbnb you did. You could be staying yeah. in someone's house where that, whilst they yeah. are there. Yeah, there's filters where you can select an entire place or a yeah. room. You can do that on Airbnb now, though. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, by yeah. default, it's it's set to show all and sometimes yeah. it can be misleading. Yeah. Oh, there's a funny video uh, to be told there and there. <laughs> Don't I've had some experiences. I'll tell those stories oh, another okay. day. Yeah. Um, so that's an area that we could, yeah. we could touch on, but I'm conscious that. Um, oh, time is ticking. Time is ticking on. The sun is setting at, at, at BJ Towers. It's time for us to depart. Um, I feel like I need to go into some sort of story there, but I'm not going to. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, please reach out to us on our social media channels at LinkedIn and on Twitter. Um, I think that's everything that we have to say this week on episode 39. So until. Uh, episode 40. Um, 40? Yeah. yeah. We're now into the Time fours, is flying. Into the fours. Um, I think we're going to move it around next week. We're going to go somewhere else. We'll film it in the car park or something. Hey, we've got the Halloween episode coming up. Spooky. We're going to film it in the dungeon. We do have a BJ dungeon. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, I bet you're thrilled to hear that. Anyway, until next week. Thank oh, you. We do. Yeah, we do. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. See you next week. See you next week. Thank you. We do, don't we? Bye-bye. Can you imagine doing the podcast down That's in the dungeon? Do. In the dungeon. For the Halloween special. The Halloween special. We'll get cobwebs and stuff. And yeah, the cobwebs are already down there. Okay. Yeah. The cobwebs are already down there. <laughs>